Hey guys, Sonish here with some Heroes of the Storm action for you. Me playing Murky on Dragonshire in this video. One thing I am going to start looking at a lot more closely is those endgame stats. Uh, trying to see where the games turned around, what was going on. Uh, kind of who were the major contributors on each team. Um, mostly just stuff like that that we're going to take a look at together. Uh, hopefully you guys agree with me on some of the commentary. Hopefully you don't. Uh, if you don't, that's okay. Just uh, tell me what you were thinking in the comments. I would really love to hear the feedback on what we can do. And let's take a look at our teams here in just a second. The build I'm doing with Murky is the uh, the team fighting build with him. And our teams are Murky, Tassadar, Murden, Malfurion, and Abathur on my team. And it actually works out for a Murky and Abathur uh, combo, which is ends up being really, really powerful. Uh, which you guys have seen from the Abathur side when I've done that. Hopefully I bring up the rest of the enemy team here. Um, I might bring that up. I am placing down my egg right behind the wall. So I didn't bring that up, unfortunately. Abathur's putting down some of his nests in the middle here, helping us out with that. I really do need to pick up my talent. Come on! There we go. Pass. Sonish is a little bit slow on picking up that first talent. Vala is in here in the middle. Uh, somebody did poke in from the top there just slightly. Tassadar's on the bottom. Looks like Malfurion wants to help me out. Almost get killed by the towers. Getting a little bit greedy. It is Murden coming in from the top. He wants to try and get me with his hammer. Maybe they can get something. They do end up getting a kill. But Murden goes down to Malfurion on that last auto attack. I will trade Murky for a full kill any day of the week. That is, a, that is one fourth of a kill for a full kill of experience from their team. So... Looks like you're throwing a puffer fish out, trying to do a little bit of damage here. We are level two before our opponents. Our Murden up top is having a bit of an issue. He is all alone. I do get taken out by Murden's hammer throw right there, very very easily. So the shrines are up in four seconds. So I'm holding the mid. M putting Murky in the mid on this map actually works out pretty well, especially if you can control the other lanes. Uh, it is a little bit difficult for him to secure the Dragon Knight. But if he can actually take it, he does a fantastic job of pushing just because of the way he works. He doesn't have to get out once he does get the Dragon Knight. He can just full there. He can sit there fully, like, he can die right next to the tower right after he takes the Dragon Knight. So Malfurion is coming down. We're going to try and secure the Dragon Knight. Murd and leaps in. I slime him up. Abathur is helping us out, throwing out a couple of stabs there. Murden is getting pushed back. I grab the Dragon Knight right there at the last second. Murden is very close to dead. He does go down there to one last attack. Hopefully I can kick Vala back here. She doesn't get behind the gate in time. Laying When you're laying down the Dragon Breath like this, it actually works really, really well. It does a lot more damage than people think, so I try and get it on as many structures as possible. Right there, I did that just to hit Vala with it. Trying to do a little bit more damage to her. Murden jumps out. So the only one I'm having any support from in the middle on my team is uh, Murden. We have about 26% health of the, or dragon health left here. 15 seconds, 6%. I'm going to die here very, very quickly. Hopefully we can take something out here. I do take that well down before dying. Fortunately, there wasn't much I could do there. But Tassadar comes from behind the trees and Psystorms Vala to death. That was an awesome move by him. He wants to take those giants. That'll help our team out quite. That'll help our team out greatly. Hopefully, we can get Murd in here. I'm going to run in, do a little, uh, not exactly YOLO attack, because that really doesn't apply to Murky. It's more like I live infinity. He never really dies if you're careful with the egg and you know what you're doing. We say Vala here is in the middle. Abathur's helping me out. That hungering arrow keeps her alive just long enough to kill me. Maybe we can get her. Looks like Murden and Malfurion are working together up top, trying to push. Ta or push. Who's that? Diablo. That is who that is. Trying to push Diablo back. I can't look around the map as often as I would like with Murky because I do end up living for most of the game, given that five-second respawn timer. A nicely timed bubble prevents any damage from that multi-shot. That hungering arrow does hit, and that actually hurts quite a bit. Takes away almost half of my health. So, Abathur's helping me out here. We're going to go in on Vala. Hopefully, we can do something about that. Malfurion's coming in. Uh, looks like he's moving bottom. The Shrine should be reactivating here pretty soon. Let's see. A uh, bit of a slower-paced game here. 
We're going to use slime on death. Zagara does go down on the bottom lane. Yeah, there's the shrines in 30 seconds. Muradin is fighting up top. He's fighting the enemy. I believe they have a murky on their team. So he's fighting the enemy murky and Diablo. Multi-shot does hurt quite a bit there. But that hungering arrow misses me ever so slightly. Looks like Murky is doing his best here to try and take out Vala. Abathur and Murky pushing in here. That Venom does a lot of damage. Oh, she misses. Oh, hungering arrow. Vala's getting pretty greedy. But so am I. I should actually probably back up. Abathur does help out. And I do get shot in the face by the turrets. I got pretty greedy there. There's Tassadar and Malfurion on the bottom taking those giants. Keeping pretty good control on the bottom lane. We have almost a full level lead on our opponents now. Although they do have the shrines. So I should be backing up. Maybe we can actually get Vala. It's going to be pretty close. I don't think we're going to be able to. She does get behind the gate. Before we can do any damage to her. Or at least enough damage to actually kill her. Muradin's being greedy. I wouldn't advise chasing Murky. Uh, it's just not worth it. It doesn't usually work out very well for you. Uh, especially when he has an Abathur on the team, because he could just go invulnerable while Abathur just gets free shots off with his abilities, with his stab and his spray. Looks like enemy Murky goes down. Diablo is doing the best he can here. Abathur and I are pushing him back. I do Venom him. Doesn't do a lot of damage to somebody with as much health as Diablo, but it does do a decent amount. Level 10 here is going to be coming up any second. Now there's level 10. I need to pick up my ultimate. Uh, come on, Pass on Ish. Pick up your ultimate. Stop wasting time. I'm a little distracted by the fight that's going on here. Hopefully we can grab the dragon. Nope, bottom shrine is get lost almost immediately. I'm going to go with March of the Murlocs in this game. His Octograb is nice for isolating one person, but March of the Murloc does far more damage. And not only does it do far more damage, it slows everyone it hits up to a total of 90%, which is really, really nice. I'm going to go a little bit YOLO here. There's my March of the Murlocs going off. You can see just how much damage it's doing to Vala, and she cannot get away. <laughs> she actually dies to the March of the Murlocs there after killing me. So you can see how good that one is, just because they do almost no damage. I need to get up here, prevent the shrine from or the dragon knight from being taken, until we can secure a shrine along the bottom. Hopefully, my fury can. Oh, oh, little catch in my throat. Sorry about that. Hopefully, my fury can secure this top shrine. Although, my fury against Diablo uh, probably not going to go very well for him. So Diablo is going to be able to push that back, no problem. Murky is out. Looks like he actually has his egg somewhere on our side of the map. If you can see the angle he came at from there. Really is a bit of an indication that his egg is probably near our knights. Somewhere around there. There's a little little place he can hide it. Murky does go down. I end Venom. Oh, can I get out of the... Ow. Get out of the ultimate. Yeah, that, that, that hurt. Now that Malfurion has that secured, I'm going to go to the mid, try and take the dragon. Hopefully we can do something about this. Bottom Shrine does get lost before I even get there. Looks like Zagara's trying to... Maybe she has a bit of a read on that. Multi-shot does miss due to my invulnerability. And I'm just sliming up all over the place. It's really rather disgusting. Hopefully we can get Zagara. She's going to be so close to dead. One last slime gets her. Murden is taking shots from the tower. Uh, so look at the sh uh, stats there. They're doing pretty well. Looks like Abathur with the ultimate, uh, and the double ultimate, actually. He has his avatar on, trying to kill Vala. He doesn't get, does not get her. Although, Hungering Arrow is hurting quite a bit. We need to turn around and take out this fort, just completely demolishing it. There's nothing Vala can do to stop this. We have a full level lead, although this will push it to probably about a level and a half. Almost two levels. So, ooh, we need to get back. Both shrines are taken by the enemy. Ma goes off. I think Murden got trapped back there by the Ma. Uh, enemy team is actually going all in here to try and stop the middle. They are going all in to uh, catch the mid. March of the Murlocs goes, catches Zagara and Murky. Both of them are very, very close to dead. Looks like Murden is about to kill our Murden. That avatar is extremely powerful. Really, really hard to fight. But we did stall long enough for Tassadar to take that bottom shrine. Doing a great job here. Abathur's helping me out. But there's not much I can do to stay alive after that. Malfur Malfurion with the grab on the root 
And as Triet takes out Murky. Great move by him. Tassadar's on the bottom, pushing with a couple of giants. That fort's about to go down, pushes our level lead to two full levels. Uh, you can see Murky's egg is definitely somewhere around here, just from the way or the the uh, angle he's coming out at. So I really had thought that Malfurion was going to kill Murky there, and that we could pick up a kill on him, but it didn't actually end up happening. Which is kind of a bummer. We're just going to push this mid lane. The game is in a bit of a lull here. Tassadar's on the bottom, picking up a couple of giants. No one on the enemy is really engaging. Uh, there is Diablo and Malfurion up top. Diablo's doing his best. Malfurion with a root, doing his best. Ooh, that ultimate's going to catch Malfurion right on there. Oh, looks like uh, we, do have the, we do have it, though. Malfurion manages to take the top shrine from Diablo, manages to force him back. I'm going to take this while... I'm going to take this Dragon Knight while uh, Muradin zones. They only have one fort up on the exterior, so I'm, I'm going to go top and take that. Um, it's a lot better to actually take these forts earlier. They give you a lot more experience early in the game than they do late. Uh, they give you 2,000 no matter when you take them. So 2,000 experience at level 16, that's a hell of a lot more than 2,000 experience at level 26. And here I'm actually trying to decide between... I've been taking Blood for Blood quite a bit, but if you guys noticed, I actually took the talent that lets you do more damage with slime. If the enemy is already poisoned, that ability will do a lot more damage every time you reapply slime to them, as long as slime is still up. So I ended up, I decided to take that one. Worked a lot better. I do, uh, the reason I pushed, <laughs> that is the exact reason that I did, uh, that I pushed Diablo back there. So separate him from the rest of his team and try and push him into my team so maybe they can pick up a kill, which Malfurion does a great job of using his Moonfire and just his Root. Looks like Murky goes down for the opposing team. They're bashing pretty hard on this front, or uh, I guess Tier 2 gate. The ironic thing is we haven't actually taken out. Vala does go down to March of the Murlocs and Murky goes down. Their Tranquility is keeping us alive really, really well there. Oh, there's Murky's Egg. Um, nobody notices that, unfortunately. We probably could have picked up a kill on him. Tassadar does see it and decides to kill the egg. Murky did survive there, so it was a bit sad for our team that we weren't able to pick up that kill. Meriden is on bottom, pushing our tier 1 fort there, trying to do as much damage as he can. We do have a 2.5 level lead at this point. That could disappear in a flash. Now, you'll watch how much damage slime starts to do when it's stacked up like this. Well, if I can catch up to Muradin, which I don't think is actually going to happen. We both mounted up simultaneously, so... Yeah, never mind on that. We're not going to be able to catch him. Ow. Yeah, that was actually pretty... That was embarrassing on my part, not to move out of Diablo's ulti there. In the middle, we have Murky and Zagara pushing back Tassadar and Malfurion. Our supports are doing a great job of actually doing quite a bit of damage and securing a lot of kills. Abathur does symbiote onto me to help out. I'm going to push Murden back here. Now you can start to see just how much damage this uh, slime will start to do once it starts stacking. As you can see there, it does quite a bit. The enemy team is coming in here to try and contest these knight, or these giants. Unfortunately for them, they are up already. Murden is trying to get out of there. Murky comes in. The only kill we managed to secure was Diablo. There goes Murden. He actually gets killed. I guess that was the poison. We might be able to get Zagara. We do get her with uh, the Abathur stab. Uh, Abathur Murky is just such a deadly combination that way, where Murky can be completely, uh, completely suicidal in his attempts to get a kill. I'm going around inside their base to try and cut Vala off. Hopefully, somebody decides to help me out. She does get. Oh, this is going to be so close if she gets there. That double slime application. I believe she is going to get into the into the fountain. Oh, she gets in there with just seconds to spare on her life. If she had been just a little bit further out of the base, we probably could have gotten there. If somebody had, somebody had been, mm, I don't know, a little bit more... If Malfurion had just gotten one more auto attack off, we could have killed Vala there quite easily. So Tassadar is moving top to try and secure, those, secure that shrine. Uh, he did a great job of sending the knights top to put pressure on the enemy team. I'm going to send the Murlocs in here to try and do as much damage as they can. I'm really not going to be able to hold this. I do have Abathur helping me out, but three members of their team just decided to come mid and kind of yellow that. Well, not yellow it, but prevent me from turning in. Malfurion and I are taking the mid here. 
Abathur, or not Abathur, but mm, Muradin should go down. Abathur's helping me out here. Actually, a pretty bad, pretty sad situation for us. We did lose the bottom shrine, so the enemy team managed to hold just long enough. Uh, managed to hold the dragon just long enough to do what they needed to do. Hopefully, Malfurion, uh, hopefully Muradin could get a hammer off there. He doesn't miss that hammer. We did take out the top fort with those knights, though, so the enemy team did have to abandon a lane. Um, they didn't. They weren't able to spare anyone to hold off those knights on the top, so they basically got their free reign on taking that top fort, or that top keep, while they had to try and prevent us from taking the dragon knight. So if you can really push two lanes simultaneously in this game, it is very, very powerful. Those mercenaries will do much more damage than anyone can really anticipate. Zagara and I do go down there. You saw how much that reapplication of the slime did. Muradin's taking the dragon here. It'll be really nice for him. Enemy Murky tries to go in and just is just a second too late on getting that off. Hopefully we can get him down. He's trying to do as much damage to Muradin as he can here. Try and prevent our Dragonite from pushing really heavily. Looks like there are three enemies on the bottom lane. We have Diablo, Muradin, and who else do we have down there? Or maybe it's only two. Maybe it's only Diablo and Muradin. No, it is Vala. Vala is down there too. So our dragon is pushing mid. Three of their enemy, three of their team are out of position, and the only one that's actually down there is Murky to try and stop him because Zagara is dead. So the enemy team would probably be better served by falling back and trying to do. There we go. Mur or Murden does Hearthstone back. We have our ultimates now. Hopefully, I can do something to Diablo here. Uh, come on, get your march off. Oh, he picks me up right as I try and do that and. Ah, uh, that's kind of a bummer. Vala ends up killing me uh, with Diablo picking me up. I think that they have all Hearthstoned back. At least I believe they have. Muradin is now in a three-on-one situation. That's never good for him. I'm going to put up March of the Murlocs here right in the middle. Prevent anyone from really turning around. Muradin should just be running away. Just getting out of there. Vala does go down though. She's basically dead. She is really, really poisoned. Muradin really should have just run away. The reason I put down that march was to help him get out of there. He does have his avatar, which will help keep him alive. Might actually keep him alive for the whole game. He's chasing down enemy Muradin. Uh, I don't think any... Oh, Muradin's second win kicks in there. Heals him up. We might be able to get Diablo. Murky is going to die. I am also going to die. But Diablo dies as well in the mid-fort. Uh, Mid-keep actually did go down. Let's take a look at this right now. Um, well, okay, we'll talk about the full stats is at the end of the game. I really wish I could look at them in-game, uh, but like I said, this is a pre-recorded cast that I did, so I can't, I don't have any control over what's happening in the game at the moment. So Zagara is moving out here. Hammer from Muradin to slow her down, and Abathur's stab and my slime finishes the job. That just does not sound right. Abathur stabs and I slime. Hmm, okay, yeah, we're gonna, moving on from the, uh, awkward innuendo. Oh, it looks like our Muradin did get octagrabbed. Unfortunately, that did not work out very well for him. Let's get Muradin. Let's get Muradin. It's going to be so close, but he gets behind the behind the fort. Saves himself. Murky's throwing down his puffer fish all over the place, and we might be able to get Vala here. Um, no, I'm going to definitely get a die, but we did get the enemy Murky. Come on, somebody get Vala. We, do, uh, we have Six. We actually have five giants pushing the bottom lane, which is going to work out really well for our team, especially if this team fight in the middle continues to happen and that goes unchecked by the enemy team. They need to rotate bottom. We have Abathur uh, Malfurion setting off a tranquility here. I know I call him Furion quite often. I've been working on calling him Malfurion. In the Warcraft 3 campaign, he's called. He's just called Furion, uh, and that's where I first learned his name and first learned of that character. Uh, you know, good 10, 11 years ago, something like that. So it's just been ingrained in my head since then. That bottom keep does go down. Those five giants are pushing really, really hard, really, really well. Uh, the enemy team finally decides to clean those up, which I can't really blame them. It ended up, you know, there was a big team fight in the middle or save the keep. Most people are going to go for the team fight. It's just more fun. Uh, the correct decision, I feel, would have been to try and save the keep. So I'm doing quite a bit of hero damage, quite a bit of siege damage uh, for my team. Let's take a look at 
This, uh, nope, never mind. I didn't get the pause off quickly enough. Hopefully that shows up again and I can pause it. If not, I'll just rewind the video a little bit and we'll take a look at that. So we're diving right for the core here. This should be the end of the game. Maybe, actually, they might be able to give us, uh, push us back. I do get octagrabbed there by Murky. Uh, but the core is down to 66%, and I'm just wailing on it. 50% now. I don't think it's going to survive. 41%. Murky's going down. He does... Actually, they do kill the dragon while their core has 23% left. So, uh, except I have a March of the Murlocs. So that should end the game right there. 15 and the poison. I'm not really sure how I feel about structures taking poison damage. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Oh, let's see. This is where I want to back the video up slightly right there. And take a look at that stat screen. Just a couple of seconds. Uh, nope, not that far. Yeah, right here should do. And that March of the Murlocs goes off. And just one second, I'll pull up the stat screen as soon as we get there. And pause. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. On my team, you have. Uh, so the enemy team we ended up fighting was Diablo, Val, Murden, Zagara, and Murky. Uh, takedowns are vastly skewed into my team's favor. Murden is actually six-fifths of the enemy team's kills. Uh, so let's look at what we were doing here. So we have Malfurion and myself with 49 hero damage or 49,000 hero damage. That's a little bit odd to see Malfurion with that much, especially when we have a Tassadar on the team and an Abathur. But all in all, pretty balanced. Um, all around Malfurion with 44,000 healing. So I would probably call uh, Malfurion our MVP here. Decent amount of siege damage. Very high on the hero damage. Uh, he's really spamming that Moonfire. And then healing 44,000. Really keeping us alive. Because if you look at... Uh, well, we pretty much just dominated the enemy team at all. Only Vala on the enemy team is even comparable to our team in hero damage. I guess Muradin uh, did... Our Muradin did get outplayed a little bit by theirs. Uh, he's got a little bit uh, less healing, a little more, little more XP contribution, but that's to be expected given the level discrepancies between the two teams. And here I am putting, pointing out all this stuff with my mouse, and I'm just realizing that this is the, uh, this is the mouse in my recording software, not in my game. You guys can't actually see this, so I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, both Murkies ended up doing pretty well, about 40, 38, uh, 49,000 hero damage. I believe the really big difference between our two teams were um, basically it's Malfurion with his 44,000 healing, Abathur shielding really, really well with that 27,900 healing, Murden with his last wind, and even Tassadar with his shielding, healing uh, or absorbing 22,000 damage. We ended up absorbing a lot more damage than the other team did, uh, all things considered. So that's probably the main turning point of this is superior supports. Um, on my team and yeah basically superior supports I don't know if we were doing higher DPS we did do higher damage as you can see just from the column and from the kill discrepancies 27 to 6 but I think the biggest problem the biggest problem for the other team was they weren't able to break th or they weren't able to deal enough DPS or they weren't able to deal enough total damage I should say they probably had higher DPS than we did but between our everyone on the team except me, uh, we absorbed you know over a hundred thousand damage, whereas the enemy team only only was only able to uh, negate you know if you look at the stats eight thousand one hundred and five thousand one hundred so fourteen thousand damage is all that they were able to negate. Uh, that could very easily be the main difference in this game. That is over. That is almost you know ninety thousand. Uh, damage or uh, 90,000 damage discrepancy in the amount of damage we were able to negate and the amount of damage that our enemy team took so that very easily could have uh, translated into 20 kills which is exactly what you're seeing on the screen so I hope you guys uh, like this video I will try and pull up uh, our stats mid game try and see how things are going a little bit better in the future hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys later